welcome everyone. We have a really special sleep life for you tonight. It's our number seven and it's our new academy in London. We're here with the cutting director, James Akers. I'm Michael Pizzolides and this is the beautiful model, Sophie. So, I want to let James take it away and tell you what he's got planned for you today. Okay, thank you, Michael. Good evening, everybody. I'm Michael said, I'm James Akers. I'm the cutting director for Slate Hair Education. Uh, what we are going to be doing tonight for you is something quite fitted to the head. So when Sophie came in, she's got a lot of hair and it kind of was all on the longer side of things. There wasn't really anything shorter than the longer. So what I wanted to do is try to bring areas down to accentuate other areas. So with my sectioning pattern, if you want to come in a little bit closer, Francesco, what we can see is we've got these two sections through this top area. And what we're going to be doing with those is leaving those areas with a little bit more length, especially through this one side through here. Now, I've started off pre-cutting and just working down into this little horizontal line through into my fingers and working that into the back. What I'm going to be doing is, is carrying on this shape, but rather than bringing everything down, I'm going to be elevating slightly more each time. What that's going to do is it's going to give us a much more fitted, head-hugging shape. And then from that, we're going to have these really beautiful elements of length through this top. But I think that the colour that's been done previously as well will work really cool. So, like, like sorry, just, yeah. just touching on um, where we are now. Luckily, you know, we have our new spot. We're in Soho <laughs> on Berwick Street, so right in the middle of London. So we're very privileged to have this space. Um, and we're actually starting our first course today, thank you Michael. Yeah, so we have the lovely Maria here with us. Come and say hello Maria. Hello guys, hello everyone. <laughs> so Maria's been watching us for a long time, right, on right, our yeah. live videos. And what happened was we ran a little competition on the last live we did. And Maria won it because she got the right answer. Now, what the question was, was what does short hair do to long hair? And the answer was... <laughs> cool, so what happened so, was Maria gave the right answer. And um, I'm really glad to be here with Slate Care Education and they're the best, they're teaching the best techniques and um, yeah, I hope I will get a lot of that. Thank you so much, but Thank it's you. your knowledge that got you here anyway because you gave the right answer, so that's why you're here. <laughs> And uh, yeah. it's very cool. So yeah, as James said, we're one minute away from Oxford Circus and we look forward to giving you lots of education from here in the future as well. But I think we should go back to James. I mean, tell us, James. So this is going to be, just for me to understand it, this is going to be a real kind of shorter shape coming through the sides and the back <coughs> and then a little bit more length on top. Yeah, exactly. What I'm starting to do here is, is working with what we call something more of a rounded rounded shape working into the back, still working with graduation, so coming shorter externally to longer internally. Now, the reason I have my sections like this is because this is out of the two, out of the side and the back, this is going to be slightly heavier, which is why I'm working in horizontal sections. But as opposed to where I, more often in this haircut, I'd be bringing this down a lot more, what I'm going to do is start to elevate this out. Okay, what this is going to do is if you imagine this coming round, we're going to come and flatten out this shape to the head. Okay, then working through to the back, from here we take our point and then I'm tucking it right into the neck. What I'm going to be doing for you a little bit later is once I've got my basic shape in, I'll just be blending through this with a bit of scissor over comb as well, just to get something really nice and tight and blended away from the skin. So as I'm working through here into the back, I'm bringing my sections around, connecting to the point with my area in the side, and again, I'm going to elevate this hair in the back to the same point that I've elevated the front up. This way, I know that I'm going to get a really nice blend in my shape. Beautiful, okay, so you're working on the blend, you're also thinking about balance while you do it a little bit? Absolutely, or? yeah. I mean. As a, as a whole, this is going to have a really balanced foundation to it, but there will be, with working with the disconnection, and my sections are slightly off balance for a reason, which I'll, we'll talk about later, uh, it's going to have a feel of some asymmetry, but with a nice foundation that, is, that will be balanced. 
<clears throat> okay, so, so you feel it's important to get the foundation in and then work on the disconnection afterwards? Yeah, for me, I think the foundation is the, the important part and the hard part, you know? Mm. I think what's, um, you know, the, the, the disconnection is more of the, the bit that we can play with and, and we can decide and change, whereas this foundation is really what's going to, what, where the, the rest of the hair is going to sit onto. So without this, having the deconstructed feel, well, just the whole thing will look more deconstructed. It won't have that nice uh, structure to the to the foundation. So it's about making it look intentional, making it look strong, while having that soft disconnection in there as well. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. You know, I mean, I think there's you know there's no there's no right and wrong with it really, mm -hmm. but it's you know it comes down to to taste. And at the moment, what I'm liking is for me with haircuts, there shouldn't really be much more than one or two focal points. So all of this should have this really nice seamless blend and then we're just going to have this area of something that pops which is just going to give it a really nice strong finish. Cool, so less is more. Guys, let us know where you're watching from, let us know if you have any questions. I'm here to read your questions and ask James them. If the live has finished and you want to ask us some questions, just pop them in the comments below and we'll be more than happy to get back to you. So let us know where you're from and let us know if you have any questions. This is your chance to ask James anything you want. <laughs> Absolutely anything. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> cool. So I'm just going to carry on working around here. Now, what's really important is that my body's moving around at the same time. Now, I'll show you why on this next section. Because when I'm starting now, I want my body to be parallel here. So as I'm combing out, I'm here, okay? Now look what happens as soon as my body moves around to my fingers. Can you see? What is happening is I'm starting to automatically tuck the hair into the nape, okay? Now, what we see a lot of the time when people work in this, wanting to fit it in, is people stand over here the whole time, okay? So keep their body position over here. And they come here, and they try and tuck it in and they can't because their body is over here. So what happens is they end up building this big amount of weight towards the center, which is not what we want to do. So by to, to slim this area through the neck, what I'm doing is, is bringing my body round each time I'm taking a new section of hair, okay? So I'm gonna carry on working through this and as you'll see, when we get to this next section, I'll spin that a little bit for you. Cool, so guys, don't forget, to ask us questions, let us know where you're from. We really feel it's very important that it's an interactive thing as well, so we really do appreciate it. Obviously, I will be asking questions as we go along as well, whenever I <laughs> have one in my mind. So I can see that your elevation has changed there. You kind of went from lower to higher as well, right? Absolutely. And, uh, and the reason behind that was because you wanted to flatten that area or you just didn't want it to stick out so much? Yeah, well, I wanted to flatten it. So if we're thinking, if we're thinking about the three-dimensional shape where what we, because I've started low, as you can see, even though I'm elevating a lot, I've still got quite a nice strength in my outline. If I'd have started my first section elevating out, then this outline would be a lot softer and more sparse. So what we've done is, is we've brought this down to create that foundation. Now, each time I've pulled that hair out, I've started to elevate more and more. So technically, I'm actually working from a graduation into a layer, because I'm now elevating the hair above the, the section. Okay, so each time we imagine what we're working with, what we're getting is we're getting this. As we come out, then as we get to that point, the light of graduation, we then start to round that in through. Okay, that's going to really fit this into the head shape and allow that when we, when we style it at the end to be a bit more versatile and move around a little bit more. Cool, I love it. Versatility, graduation, disconnection. It sounds like you've got a lot going on today. We do, don't I like it a lot. We've got a lot going on, but what we're looking for is something really simple to the eye to, to finish on, you know. I've actually, you know, half based this around the the colour that's in, in this haircut because choice of length is everything, you know, and if I choose a length that isn't gonna work for this colour, it's gonna be it's not gonna work, do you know what I mean? The whole thing's not gonna work. So what I've seen is I've seen where the colour's been done, I've seen the placement, and I've started to play around with my sectioning to work with that colour. Because at the moment, what we've got is, you can see in this top area, how this is quite bright and a bit more in your face, and this underneath has this really nice depth to it. What I want to do 
is try and get this depth more throughout the whole base and then just have the shooting of colour. So it'll be interesting to see if we can really, you know, we'll really change the colour just by doing the haircut. I like this. So basically your clients don't need to pay for colour anymore. That's, that's the basic <laughs> point. I really like that. Cool, so it's a complex thing but it's gonna look really simple. I like it, I like it. So why did you feel it's important to section off before you started? I feel like for me, your sections are like your map, right? The sections are your guide for what you're doing. So if I changed my sectioning through here and did exactly the same um, techniques, my haircut would be different. So your sections can actually, in a sense, create, create something different. What I mean is by that, for example, is let's say if I, on this section through here, I elevate everything up and cut it through here, okay? How that's gonna fall is gonna be one way. Now, if I did this exact same section, but then brought this right down here, then I can do the same, cut everything up here, but we're gonna have a much more extreme length through this bottom area. And all that is, is just changing the section. So what I've decided was, I've, I've worked on the head shape. As you can notice, where my sections are on the top, we're actually above the round of the head. The reason we're above the round of the head is because we wanted to flatten out this shape more, okay? Slim, create more head-hugging shape. Now, if we would come lower, we'd have ended up building more, like lower on the head, we'd have given more width to the head. So for this particular instance, I've decided to flatten it out a bit more. Oh, have the water spray. Yes, of course. Cool. So, Thank you. so you really thought about what you were going to do before you started, and then took your sections, deciding or based on what you were going to do, what end result you wanted to have. Yeah, exactly, exactly that. Amazing, amazing. So I'm just going to carry on working through from this top and blending through into the underneath. So, again, what I said how we're working in from this graduation really tight and fitted in that nave because I don't want to build too much weight I'm coming through and then rounding off so we're flattening out internally as well so I'm just going to connect my last section on the side and then connect all that all the way through around to the back we're going to be doing something quite different with the fringe as well which would be, be quite fun I think um, I'm really into at the moment these these little quirky fringes, but then having a bits of hair kind of sitting over them so they can be they can be hidden more or shown more. So we're going to be doing something like that for the front as well, which should be cool. So I'm just going to have a really quick little cross check through here and just get that bit out. So we can see in that last area, my elevation. I want to elevate that more, okay? Because my underneath was elevated more. So, I'm going to come back through my last section. Make sure I'm working on the hair that I want to be working on. Elevate that up. Working up to the knuckle only. Now, if we pull this out, we should be able to see here that we go from this heavy weight down here in this line, and as we pull it out, we come round, and then we come round and round closer into the head. Do you see what I mean? So we've got this really nice rounded shape through here, which should be quite weightless. Now, because I elevated up here through the sides, I have to do the same through the back. Amazing, guys. Thank you for all of you that are just tuning in. Please like and share. We really appreciate it. We want to get this out to as many people as possible. We're in London, we're in Soho District, we're one minute walk away from Oxford Circus at our new London Academy. We're really lucky to have Sophie here with us, who's agreed to be our lovely model for the evening. So we feel very lucky. We're lucky to have our beautiful James, our cutting director with us today. He's doing this amazing, quirky haircut, which is gonna have a bit of disconnection as well, a little bit of head hugging. So that's amazing. It's going to be fun, I think, isn't it? So why don't you just give a little tiny recap for the people that are just tuning in of what you're doing. Absolutely. I'm just going to come through this yeah. last section and then we'll go from where we, where we started off. Beautiful. Guys, don't forget to let us know where you're tuning in from. We love to hear it as well. 
Big up to the people from Somerset. Thank you so much for tuning in. We really want to hear where you guys are from. And obviously, if you have any questions about hairdressing, or you just want to ask James a general question, feel free. Feel free. <laughs> we're, we're here to answer as many questions as we can. So okay, guys. So I'm just going to do a really quick little recap for you. So what we've done is I've separated the hair from just behind the ear, okay? Vertically, so we separate that side bit from the front to the back. I've started off in the front with a horizontal section and come down in my fingers, through my fingers, into the line, okay? Then to connect it, I pick everything low, okay? And work in to the back, into the nape, all right? Each section I've then subsequently come in the front, I've elevated slightly more each time, working round into, from a, from a line into a graduation into a layer, okay? So we've gone through all our techniques in one little section, all right? And then as we work through the back, I elevate it to exactly the same point as I have in the front, and then work through, bring my body round to tuck into this nape of graduation. So what we're gonna find is, is later we'll have this really beautiful head hugging, tight fitted shape, and we're just gonna scissor over comb that outline just to get it really nice and clean. So I'm just gonna carry on coming through my sections into this back bit. Now what I find really hard about doing these kind of things, working from the front into the back, is that the balance becomes a really tricky, a really tricky thing to get because what you'll find is, is obviously you're working in the in the front. We can find our balance here on each side, fine. But as we work into the back, we're kind of going blind. So there's a few little tips and tricks that I find really help me get this, get the balance a bit easier to find. So the first one is is just doing my couple of little sections first. So my section in the front here, and my one section in the back. As you can see, if I turn you around to the other side here, I've put just my little first section in there on Sophie, just so I know that I have a balance before we move on. Now, once we've done that, the next thing is what I find is, when we're working into this back area, I want to be pointing to the same point on either side of Sophie's. So what I'm going to do is, from here, I'm pointing to the shoulder, okay? Now, as I come through this side, then I'm going to point to the shoulder with my the tips of my fingers as opposed to my knuckles. Now, if we're pointing to the same point, okay, on either side, we're hoping that Sophie is quite nice and balanced in her <laughs> shoulders, then hopefully that should help us get a better balance. So that's what I'm working on at the minute, and I'm really aware of that. Now, you can use different things, you know, depending on what you're doing, you can use things in the room that you can point to on either side, they're symmetrical, and it might just give you a bit more awareness of what you're doing. Cool, so you can use the person's body to point to to keep your balance. You can use the room in general to point to to things to keep your balance. I like that. I've never really heard of using the room around you. I hope you like the trips and tricks so far, guys. So please, thank you for everyone who's sharing so far. We really, really appreciate it as well. I like it, more, more tips to come. That's good. <laughs> yeah, guys, please do like and share the video for us. If you like what you're seeing, we really appreciate it. We've, um, you know, we've only been, this is only our seventh slate live and, and, and we get such a great response and so many people retuning in. So we really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for the support. And we've got our lovely Maria here as well, who's now, is, who's the winner, the winner of the course. And this is actually her second time in London. How long ago was it that I saw you, Maria? Uh, exactly a year. Exactly a year ago. Exactly a year I remember it was cold. I remember it was cold last time as well. So I'm going to have to do the winner again. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, last time what we did is we worked on our... Um, on lace. Uh, yeah, so we did our slant in our foundations course, so the first one of our, our geometrics courses. And now we're doing some men's, men's. Some men's cutting, right? Men's cutting. How are you finding it? Uh, well, it's different, yeah. It's very different. <laughs> it's very different. It's not easy, but it's a bit complicated. But you know. I think um, men's hair is one of the trickiest things to master. Would you say, Michael? Yeah. But I love it. I love it. It's uh, uh, the the way you teach. It's easy to understand. And yeah, guys, uh, don't hide. Come back. Come here in London uh, <laughs> and try a course of Slate Hair Academy because uh, yeah, it's really nice. Thanks for it. We'll pay you later. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I talk about by my experience, you know, because I'm back, so. Yeah, that's amazing. It's amazing to have, have people come back to see us, you know, more than, 
over and over again. I think that's really important in education. Is for for me, you know, doing one course is great, but really to see yourself really grow is is, is to keep keep yourself coming back. You know, keep keep dedicating yourself to that little bit of extra time to, to yeah. growing growing yourself. No, and I think that's the thing as well. You know, education should be something easy. It should be something easy to understand, something very effective to use. You know, I, uh, I'm, I'm not a believer that we have to change the industry, but we have to change people's lives through easy education. And that's really what I think Slate has been all about for us, the ones that join the company, is, you know, we're here to make sure that everyone gets an easier way of doing hair. That's why we love doing these live videos. Um, speaking of which, I think everyone wants to see what you're doing, James. Come, let's see your hands a little bit because some exciting stuff's going on. Okay. So, so what we're doing is now, like, as you can see now, my body's come further round, okay? So I've started from here and then come working through. Now, if I had come through more of a horizontal diagonal section, I'd have been more likely to build more weight. Okay, like I said previously, we're looking to flatten out the shape more. So I'm working more towards a vertical. I'm elevating the hair up. And then coming, as I come down, I'm working around. Okay, so, you, so basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to maintain the length on the top, but just go tighter at the bottom of the nape. I'm trying to eliminate a lot of the weight throughout. So okay. I want this to be really tight in the nape, so a nice fitted graduation, but I won't, what I don't want to do is build up loads of weight towards here. Okay. Because I find that on Sophie's head, these bones through here are protrude a little bit. So if I build this up, what's going to happen is, is Sophie's going to look quite wide up here. So the reason for me then coming around and elevating more is because this is going to flatten out this part of the head, which I think will work really nicely. So, so do you always check the bone structure before you start working? Yeah, I think that's one of the most important things. I think, okay. you know, I always, I actually feel someone's head as I really, you know, get my hands in there and feel and feel where, if, if, if anywhere really dramatically recedes or whether it protrudes, and then that will be then part of the decision for, for the haircut that I choose and for the technique and the shape that I choose. The other thing though is the personality. I think that it's so important, a lot of people just look at bone structure when doing a haircut, but actually your the thing you do, the thing that someone has to wear every day, you know, your hair's the only thing that you don't take off at the end of the day. And people have to suit it, people have to feel comfortable in it. And it doesn't matter, you know, sometimes if someone's bone structure would look great with something, but if it wouldn't suit who they are and how they feel as a person, then for me, you know, I don't think that's probably the right thing for them. So I think you have to take a lot of things into account, you know. I think people feeling beautiful is, is really number one. Amazing. So, uh, so what would you say, you know, when your consultation is, what, what would you say your, your, your routine is with your consultation? If someone wanted some help with their consultations, what advice could you give them? So I actually, I'd probably spend about 10 minutes, at least, on, on all of my consultations. Wow, that's quite a long time. Um, it is, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky I get an hour, I get an hour in the salon to do, to do you know, from, from them coming through the door to, to walking out. Um, but I find that, you know, the only time people ever complain, okay, if you ever get a complaint, it's the only reason is because of your consultation. Yeah. If you're strong enough and you, that, that you know what you're doing, so if you make a decision to do something and your technique is good enough to be able to produce it, then the only problem, could, the, the, you know, the, the only thing that they could possibly have a problem with at the end is because the consultation wasn't strong enough because you didn't, you know, you obviously didn't explain yourself or they didn't explain themselves. So I think it's, the consultation is actually probably one of the most important factors mm. to that. Um, so yeah, I'll sit down and talk about what they do, what they like, blah, blah, blah. And you just, you tend to just get a feel for people, don't you? See if they like, you know, I wouldn't probably give like a, some hippie artist a really structured bob because <laughs> I just wouldn't see it. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, I've, I've heard that a lot as well, and, and a lot of salon owners uh, have said as well that you know, the number one reason for complaints is bad consultations, not bad techniques. Yeah. So, you know, number one thing is always a strong consultation before you start. I think so. I think so. It, it, it's really important to me. And, like, you know, with um, when we do our models and stuff, I think we we sit down, we talk to them, we, you know, we really almost like study them. <laughs> so we've just had someone tuning in and they just said, could you explain how we started? So if Absolutely, you don't mind, yeah. do a little recap. Guys, if you're watching out there, please like, please share, put comments below and I'll read them out for James. So if you want something like a recap or if you have a question about the haircut, just let us know and we'd be more than happy. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Okay guys, so this is Sophie. What we've done is we've started off, we've got these sections out through here which, uh, which we can talk about again a bit later. But for now, what we did is we separated the back from the front, just from behind the ear, and I started working a horizontal section, okay? Working down to my fingers into this line. Now what I've done is, is in subsequent horizontal sections, I've elevated slightly more each time, okay? I kept it low at first to create this nice weight through the outline, but I've elevated each time to flatten it to the head. I've then worked section from here into the back, working on the vertical diagonal, okay? And work with the fingers, if I show you, coming through into the nape, elevating up to meet my point from the side, and working round into the nape. Round into the nape, into the nape. So what you can see is, if Sophie puts that up, perfect. You can see that we've got this nice structure to the shape, but we're actually really quite head hugging. If you look in comparison to what the other side's like, we've really flattened out. And look at that shape that we created, uh, the silhouette. For me, a lot, of, a lot of haircuts are about silhouette and creating a beautiful silhouette. So I think we're on the right track. So we've done that side. So what I'm going to do is start working through onto my second side. Cool. I mean, uh, definitely beautiful, definitely head hugging. Silhouette is amazing. You know, I find it one of the hardest things as well for to have that perfect balance, with that perfect silhouette. So I think that's great. And by starting at the front, I think we've all agreed now that it's a little bit easier to get the balance, isn't it? Yes, yeah, I, so. I think so. And especially, you know, when you're working in, like, maybe just on your first section, doing one side, one side, get your balance first and then move on. I find that really helpful. So what I'm going to do, I'm trying to try, <laughs> not sure is repeat exactly the same thing on the second side. Okay, so remembering where my elevation was each time, remembering bringing my body position round. So from, from here, my first section was down onto the skin. My second section, I'm going to come through, comb from the underneath will encourage me to elevate. And start to connect through. So do you have any tips for people about keeping the same elevation and things like that? There's, yeah, I mean, I think elevation is definitely a feeling, isn't it? And you, people took, you know, we spoke last time on Slate Live about, about almost like muscle memory and about how people feel. But I know Michael, for example, uses his fingers. So he'll put his fingers onto the skin and that will, that, that will tell him each side that he's at the same point. Now, for me with my elevation is... I, 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 use that, I use that little trick as well, but I think that if you work through one side and then you feel it, then you come back and start on this side, then you have that feeling already, so it's kind of in your head. Mm -hmm. So it's about doing the other side fairly quickly as well, I would say. Yeah, 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 yeah. To get it in the muscle memory. Amazing. So Karen uh, says, stunning shape from Bedford. So thank, thank you. you so much. Really nice to hear. Thank you very much, Bedford. Not too far from us. <laughs> exactly. So, guys, we're at the London Academy of Slate. It's our new space. We've just opened up this weekend. We've just had Maria here, our first student. So she's the first one here. We really love this space. We hope you can come see us. So please like and share this one. The sharing is really important to us. And if you have any questions, don't be ashamed to ask. We love a bit of questions as well. Otherwise, you're just going to hear me asking questions all the time. <laughs> There's no such thing as a silly question. <laughs> so Michael, when's our, when's our next course? We're holding courses. Yeah, so we before. have our next course, which is January the 19th and 20th. So January 2020, the 19th and 20th, we have one space left. 
So if you do want to come on our SLAM course, which is our first course of 2020, we have one space left. If not, we have our next one in February at some point, which I'll let you know about later. <laughs> <laughs> when I check the dates. Perfect. So how do the courses, how do the courses work? How work? Yeah, so essentially we have, uh, we have, in terms of cutting, we have three fundamental ones. We have geometric, which is the core, which is basically the essence of what you're cutting today as well. It's the core of everything we do. We have abstract, which is mixing the geometrics, which I can see a little bit again of what you're doing in your haircut today. Absolutely. And then the third one is disconnection. It's creative, which again, you will have today. So James, you're doing all of our courses. <laughs> so that's not bad. As Maria, our student here is with us today, she's doing men's. And we also offer our styling and coloring courses. So styling courses are Core, which is all your classic styling and fashion, which is all your fashion based editorial work. And then color courses is your classic chroma, your luminous, which is your blondes, balayages, forehead bleaches, and then prism, which is your creative colors, which I see there's a little bit of creative color going on today yeah, as well in this model. Cool. So we're doing pretty well so far. So cool. I think, you know, for me, um, the styling, the styling part of things is something that's really only I've started to become aware of and started working on in the last few years of my career. And it's made such a big difference to how I look at hair. I think really, you know, I was always so focused on, on cutting and only cutting that I lacked a bit of strength in my styling. But what styling does, it, it makes you look at hair as a material. Mm. And it, it allows you to, you know, it allows the playing field to get so much bigger because you've just got so many more options of how to do things. And then combining this cool styling with your haircuts is what I think you start to really see and create something special. Cool. So you would almost say take yourself out of your comfort zone as well and, uh, and learn a bit of styling if you're... If you're Absolutely. Yeah, it doesn't, you know, people say styling and they almost like automatically think of a certain thing. Whereas I think that... Styling can be very versatile, you know, it can, you can really, like cutting hair, you can really take it to, to your own taste and, and, and use it to, to do more, to create your own, your own things, you know, put your own stamp on things. Amazing. So explain to us, for those of you that are just tuning in, what, what you're doing now with the hair. So what we're doing now is, now normally I would be walking around, but because of obviously the camera and everything, I'm just going to turn the chair. So each time I'm fitting the hair more into the nape. So you can see that's where I was on my other side and I'm using that to connect it into this side. So I'm carrying on working through horizontally, elevating more each time and from this point coming down. So from here, down here and wrapped. All right, so I've got a couple more sections through this side. So. So now we're coming closer to the top, where I, at my last end of time I elevated to here. This time I'm going to really start to pick it up even more. So would you say it's a quick change in elevation? You're going from low straight away to high, or is it a gradual elevation? It's a gradual, it's a gradual, okay. because for me, I think to have flow, yeah. everything has to have fluidity. Mm -hmm. You know, so if I'm doing one, you know, let's say with elevation, if I start here, 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 and then all of a sudden lift up, I find the fluidity can go. That's why when I'm working from the front to the back, that I work from here and then instantly kind of straight into my fingers and follow around. Okay. I mean, uh, don't you find also that if you go from low and then all of a sudden you go high, you're going to have a bit of a corner? A little you're going to have a massive way. corner. And you know, like, I'm, I'm all about learning about cutting hair and not learning haircuts. Mm -hmm. So that can be cool, you know? That can be cool keeping something really heavy and then lifting up and having a big corner. But it's about the reason why. So for me in this, I wanted to create something much more, much more fluid, much more soft through this underneath. So that's why I wanted to have a nice gradual build up in my elevation. So I, as I come through to the back now, I tilt the head down. I find when working into the back, working with the head down is much better for your posture. You can keep more upright. When working to the front, then we keep the head up more. This again, much better, because if I'm here, I'm, my body's down. Lift that up, boom, and we're much better. So I'm going to keep the head down as I work through to this back. 
Sir Anley says very nice and clean and concise. Big love from London. Thank you. Very Big up much. London. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to carry on now, working through. Now look from here. I don't drop the hair. Okay. I come through my comb. That way, I know that my elevation is consistent. Let me know if this all makes sense, guys. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm just coming back through and working up to make sure that we've got this real nice, clean fluidity through our elevation. Cool. So I can see that you're combing from underneath. When you're, is there a reason? Is there a difference, would you say, to people if they're combing from under or from over? You know, how do you how do you feel about those things? Obviously, you know, we're here to help you guys. We're here to teach some hair education. So, you know, any any questions we can answer, just throw them at us. We're up for it. Mm -hmm. um, so, where I came from, really important, I think. I think, you know, if I want to keep something heavier, heavier, then I'm gonna always comb from the top, comb down, okay? Because I'm much more likely to be lower in my elevation. As soon as I want to elevate more, as soon as I want to lift, then I tend to comb from the underneath. So for example, when I'm coming through into this nape area, okay, I know that I want to really flatten this out, so I come from the underneath. As soon as I come from the top, I'm going to be more likely to bring it down. I want to come round into that nape, so I'm combing from the underneath. Okay, so like when I'm coming through onto this side bit, I work through. And now, the other thing is, where do I hold it in my fingers? When I'm working in a graduation, so building more weight, I'm going to be inside of my fingers because I'm more likely to be lower. Now, if I'm elevating more into a layer, I twist my fingers round and I'm going to work on top of my fingers. So if you see, my elbow comes up, I come through, I comb from the underneath, find my guideline. I'm only cutting when my fingers are straight. When my finger starts to bend past the knuckle, I'm not touching anything. Ooh, the silhouette's amazing. It's looking really sharp. It's all starting to come together. For those of you that are just tuning in, we're coming to you live from London at our new Slate Academy here. This is James Akers. He's our cutting director here at Slate Hair Education. Why don't you give everyone a quick recap as well for those of them that are just tuning in? Absolutely. So guys, what I did, I'm just going to come through and just finish off this last little section and I'm going to come and tell you beautiful. exactly how we started and how we got to this point. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so coming around. So are you using the centre now as a guideline to yeah. connect the middle? Exactly. So where I've come in from my first side, I should have a point in the centre where I connect in my second side. So in from here, and then I'm just coming and connecting that through now, okay? So let me come back to you and do the recap, and then I'll show you as we're working through where that middle point is. So what we've done is we've started with these slightly off-balance sections in the top, okay? We're going to talk about why that is later, all right? And we've sectioned off from just behind the ear down to separate the front from the back. I've started horizontally and worked in my in my fingers, okay, down onto the skin for my first section. I've then come subsequently into the back and then brought this low and worked around into the neck. Each section then, I've elevated slightly more each time. So in and round, up and round, up and round, and then worked in that back. As I finished my front area, then working on a vertical diagonal, okay, up to the center. Okay, I'll jump just past that centre point. Because I'm on a diagonal, I'll come to the centre and my last section will be about there. I'm now doing the same on the second side, making sure I'm keeping a balance and keeping fluidity in my technique. So, uh, Rob says, colour's beautiful. Thank you, Rob. Thanks, we Rob. have, uh, I'm not going to be able to say this name right, but uh, we have Virjolica. Jolica? Jolica, that's where we're based. We're coming to you live from central London. So we're here at the Slade Hair Academy in central London. We're one minute away from Oxford Circus in the beautiful Soho part of town. 
So if you guys are based in London, you can always come see us at any time. Just send us a message on any of our social media platforms and you can come and meet us at our London Academy and have a chat. We always like talking about hair with people. We always like meeting people as well. Guys, if you like what you see, please like and share as well. Send us a comment below and we'll be happy to answer any questions you have on hair education. You have one of the best cutters in the world right next to me right now. And he will answer any questions you have. So if you're really wondering something, you've been wondering it for a while and you want an answer, just ask James here and he'll be more than happy to answer. Again, if you have just tuned in and we've already finished, okay, so if you're watching this and the live's finished, put a comment below and we'll get back to you afterwards as well. Absolutely. We certainly will. Can I have the water spray, please? Cool. And uh, thank you, Rhonda, for watching from Florida. We really appreciate it. We love you guys out of the States. We do a monthly hair brain live as well. So for those of you that want to see our monthly hair brain live, keep an eye on out. The next one is on the 18th of December. Perfect. And will you, you'll be doing that, will you, Michael? I will be indeed, yeah. Perfect. So uh, I'll and where will you be doing that, that from? Uh, that will be in Cyprus. We will be back in Cyprus doing a one-to-one -one class there. And we go very often as well. We go about seven times a year to Cyprus to teach. Same, we have our friends down in Armour Beauty in Greece. We're always down there. So yeah, guys, tune in for our monthly Hairbrain Live. We will be giving away one free ticket to one of our classes. Unfortunately, the January one looks like it's going to be booked up, but February, a lucky winner could be you. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Cool. This looks interesting what you're doing. So, so guys, just to quickly run through where we are now. Now, because I've elevated this up through here in the front, if we can see, then what I need to do is I need to make sure that my elevation is the same, okay? So, I'm really working through my technique here from a layer, so connecting from this layer, Coming through around, I'm going to spin the chair around, push it down for me, perfect. From that point, so combing here is so important. From here, and then I'm working down into that graduation. So we're really combining techniques here. We're combining layering, graduation all in one hit. And so what's, what is it, is there any pointers you can give if someone thinks, well, uh, what do I have to think about when I combine a layer and a graduation? Is there any, anything you could tell them that they should be careful of, would they maybe flatten the shape too much if they layer it too much? Or? I think that, you know, I think you have to think about why you're doing something, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and that reason will be, will be the forefront of, of what you're doing. So. If you know that you want to flatten out an area, then that's where you're going to be elevating more most of the time. So for me, I knew I wanted to flatten out in this area, okay? So what I'm getting for the difference between doing it this way and bringing this all down and then lifting it up is I'm not getting any corner through here. So if I brought this all down and lifted it up, what I'm going to end up with weight through this middle area. So I'm going to try and get that really seamless from that line into this flatter shape. That's why I've done it this way. So yes, it is a little bit harder, it's a bit more tricky, but I think that the result will be worth it. Cool, so layers you're gonna do in the place that you wanna make sure it's more flat, yeah. graduation you're gonna do in the place you wanna see it more heavy, you wanna see it filling out the bone structure more, sticking out more. Exactly, you know, it's like, right. it's like if I wanna build a corner, you know, you gotta think why do I wanna build a corner? Then you have gotta think about where is that corner gonna be sitting on that person's head? Because if I go, okay, right, this goes flat in here, so I want to build something square, but I cut it up here, then that's not going to sit here, it's not going to fill up that part of the head, it's going to fill up down here. Mm -hmm. So we have to think about choice of length as well as our shape and technique, I think it's really important. So if I understood correct, basically you're saying you've got to think where it's going to actually fall once you've cut it. So if yeah. you cut it higher up, it's going to fall lower down the head. And is that where you want it to be or not? Exactly. So the further away you are from the head, the longer the hair will be and the heavier the shape will be. Amazing. Sounds like solid advice. <laughs> so someone said, uh, so there's no weight line on the back and just graduation and layers. I'm hoping for no weight line yet. I'm wanting something much more seamless. So if we look now, we're starting to, you know, I've got another section or two. 
So if I'd have just come through and built this up all the way, so boom, heavy, heavy, bringing down, then we would have worked into something with a bit more of a weight line. Because we've come through from higher into lower, higher into lower, what we're getting is we're getting a much more fluid, seamless shape. Okay, because we're not working into, into infinity. We're coming through in that graduation and bringing it round closer to the head. So I think that's, you know, it's, it's a bit of a different way of working it, but I think it's, it's quite fun. Now, the, the tools that are gonna help you keep, um, you know, flatten things out and build things. So the reason why my sections, for example, are much more in the vertical is because I'm flattening out more. As soon as I move towards more of the horizontal, I'm gonna be building more. So I use these little tools to help me. Thank you, Michael. You're such a great cleaner. Uh, well, you know what? You've uh, you've got a big fan as well. Um, Vicky says, come to Texas. She goes, love this guy's work. Thank you so, so much. Vicky. I'd love to come to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Vicky. It sounds like he'll take you up on your head, right? <laughs> so he'll be seeing you there soon. And uh, That's where the Kelly Slater wave pool is, I think. I've always wanted to go there, so there you go. Ideal. Very cool. <laughs> We have Michael Stannard watching. Thanks, Michael. Hi, Michael. What a, um, what a help he was for us. Yeah, we, we have uh, Price uh, Scissors is watching. The hey, guys. house is beautiful. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you do like what you see, please like, please share. We really appreciate it. Hit the button down below and hit the share button. We really appreciate it, guys. If you do have any questions, ask James. He's here for you to answer all your questions. Guys, I'm just going to quickly show you now where I've got to. Now, I've actually completed my technique in the underneath, okay? So my, my original shape, I'm done. I want to quickly do a little cross-check in this back bit and show you what, 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 we've, what we've created. So uh, George just asked and said, where are you over-directing for the back part? Where am I over-directing? Okay, so what I'm doing is, is for me, with over-direction, okay, People, when, when explaining it and teaching it, what I tend to do is I tend to be quite rigid, rigid with it. So two will go to one, you know, three to two, so back to the previous or everything back to the first one to make it clearer. What I do find when I'm working is I use a little bit more like areas of the head. So let's say I might want to over direct everything back to the corner of the head here. And that's where I know I'll do the same on that side. What I'm doing in the back is I'm slightly, so in each section, what I'm doing is I'm pulling it out, and so if you see from here, can you see my build up of weight? I don't really have one. Yeah. Because we've started from here, what I'm doing is, is each section I take, I'm just pulling it to the middle of that section. So if this is two sections, I take half of my old one, I take my new one and pull it out into the middle. So I'm not really over-directing either side. And what that's just giving me is it's allowing me to work through. Now, I've over-directed the top more than the underneath, the underneath not at all. So if we come through and cross-check here, what we're going to see is we've got this nice, now luckily we've managed to meet in the middle, okay? And what I can do is just come and just dust any little, any little weight. So, so the, the essence of over-direction, you know, for those of you, for those people watching who maybe don't know so much about over-direction, do, could you give them a basic explanation of, of what over-direction is? Absolutely. And over-direction is, well, first of all, let's start from the very basics, is when you pull hair away from its root to build length or weight. Okay. So, so it's building more length and weight when you over-direct the hair? Yeah. Okay. So the hair that's being over-directed will be longer than the hair that you've over-directed onto. All right? So... If I wanted to build a lot of weight, I would over-direct, maybe I would cut my first section, over-direct everything back to that. If I wanted to build a gradual bit of weight, I would come back to my previous. So let's say we've got five sections in the back. I would take number two onto number one. Then I'll take number three onto number two, number four onto number three, vice versa. And that's going to give us much more gradual build-up. So when you say build-up, are you talking about shape as well? Like, are you talking about a rounded shape, are you talking about a square? Does that affect the over-direction? Like if you're over-directed more, will it change the shapes? Well, it will change the shape, yeah. But what you, I, would, I would look at things more as, as length, okay? And where the length is gonna be. So if I want more length towards the front, I know I've got to pull this head back more, which will be uh, using over-direction. If I want to build more length and weight in the back, then I'm gonna to have to over-direct the back hair more towards the front. So wherever I want to build my, build my weight or length, 
I need to over direct away from that area. Does that make sense? Okay, so basically you're saying I want more length in the front, I pull the hair more back with over direction, I want more length in the back, I pull everything more forwards. Yeah. Okay, amazing. It's cool. It's one part. Now what I'm going to do now guys is just start to put in a little part of my fringe. So I'm going to start to flatten this down a little bit. And uh, Sierra said, would you use point cutting for this cut too? Would I use point cutting for yeah. this cut? Yeah, I mean, for me, what I, the way I like to work, now there's no right and wrong or anything, but the way that I like to work is, I like to get in my technique, my, my shape first, using everything blunt cut. So that way I can really see, because to point exactly the same everywhere is, is very, very difficult, almost impossible, I would say. So I like to get my structure in that way. The other thing is, is I like to cut hair in my basic shapes when they're wet. So if I'm doing it when it's wet, I have less control when I'm pointing into hair. But like here, for example, if you see in here where the hair's wetter and they're all stuck together, when I'm pointing into that, I don't have much control of what I'm taking out. When the hair's dry, the hair separates more. So I can see much more on what I need to take out. Thank you very much. No worries. Read my mind, look at that. Okay, so you like to get your basic shape in with blunt cutting with and then you don't now like when, to put in on when, after. Yeah, so when the hair's dry, that's when I can look at the shape and then I can determine whether I feel like it needs to be point cut or not. Okay. Cool. So what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to work again in vertical sections. I'm going to come through and just start to lift the hair up. Now, this isn't going to be my fringe length of the fringe, okay? But what it is going to be, it's just going to start reducing some of this weight. So I'm going to do a little bit at a time here. This looks exciting. So obviously it's, it's the front, so you're very conscious about the length, right? Very conscious, yeah. Amazing. And what I'm really conscious of at the moment is, is where the weight is. Because what I'm going to do at the end is I'm going to come through and put in my final length. Okay. But what I need to think about is, is when I'm putting that in, I want it to be a bit more distorted. So that's why I'm layering this down first. So even when I want things to look a bit, a bit crazy and a bit wild and a bit unstructured, I tend to use a lot of structure to create that, if that makes sense. Amazing. And I'm using the same over direction, so I'm taking half of my, half of my guide and my, and my other new section, and I'm just making sure that I'm gonna pull that out into the middle. So I'm working on the base. So you're over directing everything to the middle? No, so no, no, sorry. Um, so I'm putting everything out into the middle of each section. Okay, okay, so you're almost traveling around with the head as you're going. Absolutely, okay. yeah, yeah. Cool. So, and as I get through to this, what's going to be quite nice is I'm gonna also elevate, if there's anything that I can connect from this side into, then I will be connecting it as well. So that's gonna give this hole underneath from the front to the back, this real nice uh, fluidity. Again, I keep using that word, but I think it's a really a really beautiful word and one that is really important to me about, about cutting hair. I mean, for me, whenever I think of fluidity, I kind of think of more rounder shapes as well, like what you're talking about, you're doing in the fringe you know, keeping on the base and therefore creating a bit more, a bit more rounded round shape, and shape yeah, is a absolutely. bit more fluid as well. Absolutely, well it's, it's, it has that, like you say, it's more seamless, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it does, we don't build, we're not building corners, we're not trying to build too much weight anywhere. So I'm just going to come through now, any excess hair, just connecting. Looks amazing. Thanks, mate. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to do exactly the same process now on the other side. Amazing. People do say you, people have said you look like the Zohan Michael, and now you're cleaning like the Zohan Michael. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm trying my best. <laughs> I'm trying my best. <laughs> oh, One day I'm going to be as good a hairdresser as him as well. <laughs> One day. Silky smooth. Silky smooth, that's it. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you everyone for tuning in. We're coming to you live from London here at the Slate Hair Academy. If you like this, please like and share. We really appreciate your support, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is James Akers. Like I said, we're here from Slade Hair Education. 
If you're just tuning in, James will give you a little recap after he's finished the fringe area. Absolutely, which is around about now. Brilliant. So, do a very quick so if you have any questions, just put them down in the comments below. So you write the comments, I'll read them out to James. If you have any questions about this haircut or any haircut, just let us know. If you want us to go over something, if something we said doesn't make sense, just let us know and we'll repeat it as well, guys. So we're here for you tonight. Absolutely. Cool. So we have a question from Bolivius. I know Boris very well. Hi, Boris. Um, so he says, so it's back to the previous of each section. I think he's talking about the fringe. So, so with the fringe, I was actually following the head shape. So I so I probably didn't explain that very well. What I meant was is just in if this is a section, okay, each section I bring to the middle of it. So I'm not going side to side, okay? So then I take a bit of this, this section, and I'm in the middle. This section, I'm in the middle. Does that make sense? So I'm actually following the head shape. So I'm working what we would call on the base, so straight out from the base, the head. Okay, I hope that answers your question. If it doesn't, let me know and I'll try and answer it a bit better. What I will do for you now is just do a quick recap, okay, of what we've done with this underneath, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna dry the underneath, work on the outlines, and then, work through this top view. So guys, what we did is we separated exactly the same on both sides, just behind the ear, working in horizontal sections in the front, elevating slightly more each time, but eventually ending up into a layer, okay? So working down from here, so zero elevation, okay? Up, 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 until we were flattening into this head shape. From there, I've been connected into the back, working on a diagonal, okay? And because I wanted to then carry on flattening out this shape, I went more towards the vertical, working through into the center back. And repeat exactly the same on the other side and just connected everything through. So I'm just gonna really quickly blast this dry now, give it a nice little wrap dry, smooth it through, and then I'm just gonna start doing a real subtle bit of scissor over comb, just blending away these little outlines, everything for you, okay? So, bear with me, it's a little bit of so Leandro asked where we're based. We are based in Soho, we're on Berwick Street. So 72 Berwick Street here in Soho District. We are literally one minute walk from Oxford Circus and a two minute walk from Tottenham Court Road. We could be in Piccadilly Circus in three minutes. So we're in a beautiful central location here in London coming to you live tonight with the beautiful James Akers, always doing beautiful haircuts for us. Thank you. Cool. So, as we said, if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to let us know and we'll be more than happy to answer them. James has done this really amazing haircut as well. Don't worry if you're just tuning in because we'll keep recapping as we go along as well, guys. So just to explain, we are from Slade Hair Education. So if you want to come, we have to do a little bit of branding, guys. Come and have a little zoom in on that little snake. <laughs> so we do a lot of live videos. So if you want to, you can always follow us as well. Absolutely. And so if you follow our social medias, you'll be able to see all of our snake lives. And you'll be able to see our hair brain lives as well. If you go on our social media, we have the head sheets that we've drawn each time. So each one of the haircuts that we've ever done, we'll have a head sheet with it as well. You can see all the old Hairbrain Lives, and we're coming up to two years of Hairbrain Lives as well. I feel a bit nervous because it's my first time talking and not doing hair. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's funny how different it is, isn't it? It is a bit weird. When you're not doing hair, you're like, I feel helpless. <laughs> like, I feel a bit naked right now. I should be doing something. <laughs> it's quite nice. It's all right, Maria bought us some whiskey, so we'll have that a bit after as a little treat as well. So guys, just quickly, just to let you know why I'm dry drying this like I am. At the end, when I'm, when I'm going to wear this, I'm going to look for something actually quite deconstructed and quite textured. But when blow drying, I always find it's much easier and much better to smooth it out first, and then you can start building it up and building up the, the product to make it look like it's a bit messier. I always find getting that nice structure in the blow dry, like with a haircut, you tend to just get a nicer finish. And when you're doing your refining and everything, you can just see everything a little bit clearer. So we can see now that we've got this, as the hair moves, this is the whole point of what, of, of what we do, you know, is seeing that hair move and being able to push it either way, and it just sits really beautiful. We've got that nice structure of the outline, the internal hair's moving, we don't have any weight lines in it, luckily. 
So we've got what we wanted. So that's a good start. That's a good start. I'm just going to blow dry the, the hairline down nice and flat. So when I'm sitting over combing, I can really see it. Okay. So Michael, are we going to be doing hair brains next year as well? Yeah, so uh, we're just waiting for our dates for next year, but we will always be bringing you some amazing free live education. We want to say a huge thank you to the hair brain community that always tunes in and watches and asks loads of questions, so we really appreciate it as always. We love to be able to bring you free education because we feel like that's what it's all about. It's all about bringing you free education. And so anything you can do to make your lives better as well is what it's about. The, the haircuts looking amazing, the movements looking amazing. I'm, I'm loving the colour popping out as well. I think what you're talking about having flow in the haircut is so amazing as well. Yeah, I think, um, like I said earlier, for those of you that are tuning in, when, when Sophie came in, all of this length was over the top and we had this real brightness covering the whole the whole hair so you couldn't see it in the depth in the underneath so what i really wanted to do is bring much more of the depth out and then have this color popping so really accentuating things i feel like taking hair shorter will accentuate extra length so if there's anything that you need to if there's an area you want to accentuate with someone by taking an area next to it shorter or flatter it's going to help accentuate that so what, what tips can you give about wrap drying? Because uh, Sarah's, uh, Sarah just commented that that Denman wrap with, you know, that energy where there's hearts everywhere around the <laughs> So she's obviously vibing your Denman wrap. Thank you very much, Sarah, for that comment. Love that one. So I think for me, with, with, with drying, it's actually one of those things that people always say, you know, it looks really, it looks really easy, but it's actually very, it's it's very right, complex. It's, it's really so difficult. <laughs> So, you know, first of all, my, my first tip is that I always use two hands. So when I'm working through to the left side, when I'm brushing forward, I have the brush in my left hand. When I'm doing the other side, vice versa. Now, if you have not so much on length, this length here, but on, say, like a bob or something through here, when you find the hair kicks a lot in one way, okay, whichever way your handle is when you're tension drying, that's the way your hair is more likely to kick. So if the, if the bob's really kicking out here way too much, I'll brush it back the opposite way, come through, put my handle facing towards the back, heat, and then that's gonna help that sit under nicely. So either way, if it's kicking back, then I do the opposite, I bring it forward, okay? Mm -hmm. that, should, that should really help the help nicely, getting those nice yeah. clean bows nice. It's, it's looking beautiful, really like the build-up of weight in the back is amazing. Thanks, Thank you so much everyone for watching. Please like and share, put a comment below. We'd love to answer all your questions as well. We so will. feel free to mm -hmm. ask anything. Well guys, that's where we are tuning in for. It's always really yeah. nice for us to hear where you guys are coming in from and where we're, where we're reaching out to. So just throw a little comment in and let us know where you're from. And if you could like and share the video, it would be so grateful. It'd be amazing. Amazing. So also, if you go onto our, if you go onto our website, You'll be able to see loads of the lives that we've done. They're on the website as well. So if you are on our social media, sorry James. Yeah. If you are on our social media, you can see all of them. If you go to our playlist on our social media channels, you'll see the Slate lives and the Hairbrain lives. But if you go on our website, you'll be able to see also all of them on there. So that's slatehair.com. Cool, so what are we gonna do now, James? So good question. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm gonna try and do now is if you, if you can see, for instance, go into that, that shape in the back there, we've got that nice shape, we've got that nice silhouette, we're not building into too much weight, nice and head hugging. But what I, what I can see is just from here, can you see this? So if I spin the chair up a bit more, right, let's see it there. Okay, so from here, what we've got is, this is just a little bit on the baggy side for me. So what I want to try and do is just really tighten that up into the nape. So I'm not, I don't want to change my shape, I don't want to change anything too much. But what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to start. Now, for me, this Bowie comb is great for scissor over comb because it's not too much tension in it. It's quite light and it just lets you kind of flow and move with it. So when scissor over comb, I never start up here. Always starting from the lowest point, okay? So almost, what I do is I almost start cutting before there's no hair to cut. And I'll come through. 
and just start to blend away that length. So what I'm really trying to do is connect almost the hairline into the internal shape. So really subtle, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do anything too extreme. Just wanna to start to take that out. Beautiful bit of precision there, James. Really beautiful. Thank you. Now, there's lots of different tips and tricks, I think, for scissor over comb. For me, you know, the only way you really get there is by doing them over and over and over again. But, you know, for that, for that blade to be moving faster than the comb, the blade to be sticking around that area on the comb, as soon as you start coming up here and down, up and down like this, that's when you're going to start to get loads of lines in your scissor over comb. So be really aware of that. Now, some people like to, you can see what I'm doing here, my finger I'm pushing, okay, onto this comb. That way I know that my scissors are gonna stay in the same place. So that can help some people. For me, I feel like I'll keep my blade there and just work up and just keep working over that same area until I've got it, until I'm happy. So almost like you're working columns. So little panels as you work, you know what you've done, you know what you haven't done. Exactly, and I always do think as well, when you're working in a scissor over comb, to start, if you start from the, <clears throat> start from the bottom always, and always, even if you're not taking anything off, always come and work it up. And what you're really doing as well is you're almost kind of cross-checking your shape while you're doing this. So we can see we've got it now. We're just going to go in now to the smaller teeth of the comb. And just blend out that hairline. Now, there's different things we could have done with this. You know, we could have put in a little shape here. I do, I think this is probably the hardest of the, the, the most tricky and the one that takes the most time. But for the finish that you get from it, I think for me, it's, it's, a, it's a lot nicer and it's going to grow out much nicer for Sophie. So do you always have that concept as well, not just how it looks now, but how it's going to grow out for your client? Oh, your God, always, yeah. Well, I mean, let's be honest, clients are our business, aren't they? They're our livelihood. So whether they look wicked on the day, you know, how many clients have you had come to you and say, oh, I had this haircut, it looked great for, for two days while the blow dry lasted, and then when I tried to do it at home, it looked terrible. You know, I, I find that happens quite a lot. So what I want to try and do is, you know, create something where someone doesn't have to do, do a hell of a lot to it every day. You know, I do, you know I'll, I'll blow dry something with a round brush and I'll do this to give it finish if they want it because we're in the service industry. That's what we have to do. But I also will still have a really strong technique in what I'm doing. I think that's really important. Amazing. So, uh, so obviously anywhere that you think might grow out quicker than somewhere else or might end up looking a bit baggy or off or not sit right, you would try and uh, fix that before they leave, basically. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So like this back area that you're working on now, it might grow out a bit quicker than, than the rest of it look a bit baggy, so you're just whacking it off, right? Exactly, you know, and if you start putting in, you know, and, I, and I'm not adverse to it, but you know, if I start putting in kind of strong hairlines and stuff, then it can look great, but then in a week it's gonna to start to look grown out. Now what I do do for my clients, and if you're work, doing work like that, I recommend you do it as well, is I offer them um, a service where they can actually come back in and just get that little neckline touched up for free, almost like a fringe trim. And that tends to give them like an extra week or two out of their haircut, which I know we want our clients coming back more often, but if you do think little things like this, and you know at least they're going to be coming back to you, you know. And for me, I think that's a, that's, a big, that's a big help because a lot of people want to take that hair, you know, something a bit stronger, a bit edgier, a bit, you know, above the hairline a little bit. But they're scared of how it's going to look in a couple of weeks. Well, you've solved the problem if you can do it for another couple of weeks. Amazing. So basically, instead of offering a fringe trim for someone with short hair, you're just like, I'll just clean up a little bit of area around the neckline for you. Yeah. And it's basically taking you the same amount of time that you're yeah, keeping exactly. your client happy. Yeah, 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 exactly. Brilliant. Brilliant. That's a great tip for keeping your clients happy. I like that. Um, Helen says hello from uh, Mayo Island. Mayo Island. We got other Irish here. I like that tuning in, and she says fabulous cut and education Thank with, you so with much. a kiss. So there we oh, go. kiss back. Thank exactly. you so much. I love that. Thank you very much, Helen, for tuning in. That's brilliant. So really, just kind of 
carry on working through in my columns. We can see the difference now just from here to this side. We've just got that slightly cleaner, slightly fresher finish to it, you know. If you can see if I stick up the light there, sorry. So I just come through really nice and slow. Bring it all the way up. Now a good tip to see whether you're being clean or not in your scissor over comb is if you start from the bottom and comb up, you can see this white line in the underneath. Now we've got a nice clean white line that's straight then that means that we're quite clean in our technique. As soon as it starts going like this and getting lumpy, then we probably have a bit more of a problem. I'm just going to come through into this side and start to blend out now again. Okay. From the bottom, working up. So, uh, Boris also asked, uh, you prefer working without the nozzle, and why? Uh, I don't necessarily prefer working without the nozzle. When I'm, it depends what I'm doing. If I'm doing a wrap dry, if I'm wrap drying, I prefer working without the nozzle when I'm actually wrapping the hair around the head because the airflow isn't as concentrated. I feel like when this hair, all the hair, you know, through like the crown area, sometimes if we really force it to sit away, then as soon as she moves it, it's just going to stick up. So I find actually when I'm wrap drying, I'm quite loose. I'm kind of letting the hair do what it wants, but just helping it along its way, getting it that, getting that extra polish for it, you know. And on this hair, we've got quite straight hair. So really what I just wanted to do, I wanted to get a bit of air in there so the hair will move nicely for me when I style it later. Brilliant. Um, Poppy says, hello from Greece. Guys, let us know where you're tuning in from. We'd love to hear where anywhere around the world you are from. We've had from the States, we've had Greece, we've had Cyprus, we've had Ireland. We've got lots of countries coming in. So thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. It means a lot. It really does. Really Please like and share the video for us, guys. We really appreciate it. We really want to get this out to yeah. as many people as possible. And obviously, we've had people from the UK tuning in all over. So thank you so much, guys. We're coming to you from London as well. And James has just done this beautiful, beautiful haircut. He's running through. He's still got the disconnection to go. And everyone loves a bit of disconnection. I know I do. It's going to be the fun bit, <laughs> It's right? going to be the fun bit, obviously. <laughs> With some really good tips on education. If you are just joining in, don't worry. When the video finishes, you can always go back to the beginning and watch how he started as well. But James will do a recap for you before moving on to the disconnection, I'm sure. Absolutely. It will. Really will. All right. So... With this, rather than coming in with the clipper and taking that off, I'm just going to come in with my scissor and just start cleaning that away. I don't want it to look too, I don't mind if it's a little bit fluffy there, you know, I want it to look like it's a real seamless little blend from that underneath. So, just kind of working through, the same on the other side. So really subtle, but it's all about the details, isn't it, in what we do, you know, they're the things that make all the difference, a little bit of detail. Okay, so what I'm looking for now is that I can see from the back that I'm happy, but I just want to look at this silhouette and make sure I'm really getting this silhouette how I want it. And uh, yeah, it's really bringing out that head shape now beautifully in the back. Really, really, really beautiful. Oh, I'm glad, I'm glad. We are getting there. Now, if there's anything, things that are a bit heavy when I'm sitting over combing, what I like to do is I like to tilt the head back, and that way you're just going to end up scooping out that little bit of extra weight. So, so explain, because I, I personally know this is an amazing trick and I do it all the time, but not many people have, have heard about that one. So, so talk a little bit about head position. So what's the difference if you have the head down, if you have the head straight, and if you have the head back again? So for me, I mean, it's where it is, it's how the skin's stretching, you know. As soon as you put this down, you stretch it out, so each area is more spread out. So you can see the hair a little bit clearer when the head's down. So I like to start off like this. Okay, and every now and then what I'll do is I'll just put the head straight so I'm seeing how it's going to look, you know, when, when Sophie's walking around day to day. No one walks around with the head down here, do they? So, but what we're getting is, is if it looks perfect like this, like that, and like this, then I think we're on to a winner. Okay, so checking it in every position is really important. I think uh, what you said there is really important as well. It's not just having it down all the time, it's also keeping the head upright as well, seeing how it's going to look in the natural state and then putting it back down again 
Um, you know, personally, I always find that when, when you get, like some people get weight lines in their graduation, mm -hmm. and I find if you pop the head back and you scissor over coat, what you do is you remove the weight lines that you find in the middle of the bagginess. So even like some men, they have a bit of a, I don't know how to put it, a bit of a chubby, chubby head. So they, have, <laughs> like, they have ridges in the head yeah, and it yeah, sticks yeah, out. Yeah, so yeah, you know, just tilting the head back and just scissor over combing that area kind of blends it in nicely as well. So it's a good, it's a good tip for blended graduation. I think that's a really good one. All right, guys. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to because this because this disconnection is going to be sitting sitting over the underneath a little bit. What I want to do now is just to start as well, just to play with these little outlines in through here, okay? So just sharpening everything up. So let's start off just through the side here on our line. And really, really subtly, just coming in and just cleaning through. So using the points of the scissors means I'm not going to be pushing the hair at all, okay? And I want quite a a soft finish to this, so it's going to give a bit more empathy to the hair as it moves. Amazing, I like that. Empathy for hair, that's <laughs> really good. And this is one of my favourite parts as well, this kind of like outline parts. And yeah, like it's, it, is it's, it makes everything pop, doesn't it? It's a smaller amount of the work, but to create, to create something much more. So again, through here, just having a look how it's sitting, again with the points. Getting that through. So guys, let me let me know what you think so far. I um, think his next, you know, over these next sort of twenty minutes, you're going to really notice a big change in in the way that it looks, which will be which will be cool. Be a nice I mean, transformation. One thing that I see, and you know, I think you're not just doing it for the camera, is that you stand quite far back when you do these things. That's you're not so see. close. Yeah, that's that's so right. I think, so, yeah. so uh, I think it's you know for everyone out there as well, you know. The, the the back you are, the more you're going to see. So the way James sees his silhouette so nicely is because he stands quite far away when he's working, and I think that is that. something that works really well. So this okay. is a this is a fun part. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start coming. I'm coming from the top to right. see. That's I'm going to start coming up into this hairline. Okay. Now, Sophie, whenever you need to, you just start brushing away. All right, because this yeah. is going to feel quite uncomfortable, but. I'm working with an up and down motion and just really just taking away some of this weight and some of this length. So really starting to open up that face. Because I feel like Sophie's got so much hair, such a gorgeous face that she's just kind of buried underneath it all. So I want to really kind of start to open that up a little bit more. Do you want a little brush? Why not? I <laughs> <laughs> uh, just want to give a shout out. Um, a little bit to uh, John, who's watching from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So thanks so much Hi, for tuning John. in. Hi John, thanks for tuning in. Dude. I can see a, a friend of ours who watches a lot of our Hair Brain Live tuning in from Hong Kong. So thanks so much, guys. Oh, thanks. It's so so great to have you all with us on a Sunday evening as well. <laughs> <laughs> right. So this is something that you know, it's quite a visual thing. It will take quite you know, it can take time and just kind of I keep working something until. I start to see little bits come out and then I accentuate those areas. But can you see now, have you come really close here Francesco, have you come right in with the camera, can you see this hair on top here is where I put the layer in? That's why we did that originally, everything we do has, has a purpose, okay? So now I'm putting a bit of tension on the hair before I'm cutting, that way the, it's going to allow the hair to spring up and have a bit more graduation in it, be a bit softer. And this hair on the top is really breaking the whole thing up. So as I come through, it's just connecting everything in. I'm going to come through into these side areas. And you need a brush, so if you know, babe. Okay. Maybe now's a good time. Well, that definitely <laughs> looks like uh, the funnest part of the evening. <laughs> that, that's the moment when I thought I wish I was cutting hair as well. <laughs> that, that's definitely. So just for the people at home, would, would you do that in the salon? Would you put someone's head back Absolutely. as well? Yeah, you would do. Yeah, okay, yeah, amazing. Absolutely. It's quite nice. I think yeah, you know, like, we're quite I like it. personal people as hairdressers, you know. So for us to to do these things to our clients as well. Come close, come and rest in my belly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everyone needs a belly for a pillow. I think I a song like that once. <laughs> so what I'm doing now, guys, is just where that, 
in that front area was a bit weaker. I've just kind of taken that round and followed that into our fringe. So again, it's all about that kind of connection, that fluidity, that flow. And uh, so, so just to talk a little bit about suitability, everyone always likes talking about suitability. What, what do you believe you'll be doing if you're opening the face like that? If you... So for me, I, the reason this works so well, opening around here, is because it opens up around the brow bone on women. And nine times out of ten, that's beneficial. You know, rarely does that does it does someone look worse when you do that. You're very hairy, don't you? Know, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> You're very tolerant, actually. I don't know. <laughs> um, so f for me, I, I always think that having that nice kind of arch around here is really beautiful and really open up an area. Not on everyone. It's not going to work on everyone, but as a majority, it does. And I think, like I said, for Sophie, what I really wanted to do is just open up the face a lot more. So I think it'll be a good actually example if we see here, right? How this is looking at the moment, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come through and we're gonna take that away now. Let's see what that does to the face shape. So I'm coming again from here. I mean, it doesn't have to be crazy dramatic what you're doing. And can you see how that just really arches around? Now, for, for me, for, like femininity and stuff, a lot of it's about curve and about, you know, something that's soft with a bit of roundness. So anything too boxy can be, be a bit more aggressive. So you can see creating this nice soft roundness, I think is, is, it can be re really feminine and really beautiful. How's that looking, guys? Let me know what you think. It's looking really beautiful. Everyone Getting likes somewhere. it. We have another question from Bolly, so I'm trying to decipher it a little bit, but I think he's basically asking, could you have done this with just cutting it that short rather than just pointing uh, more off? He was just asking, can you kind of cut it to that length from the beginning? And you could, but what you're going to find is, I think, if, you, if I just cut this off, boom, and then find it, I'm gonna lose all those natural imperfections that I'm gonna get from doing something in a bit of a different way. So by doing this, naturally, I'm gonna create little funny bits and there might be little long bits, but they're the things that I wanna keep. Turning something from perfect to making it non-perfect is, is, is quite difficult, I think, in this sense. So for me, I think this is actually gonna work, work really nicely. If you see what I mean now, as, as I move the fringe, all these little imperfections are gonna come out, and that's what I really like. That's what I think is gonna be really beautiful. Looking stunning. Looking so really stunning. The last little thing I'm going to do before I do the recap and do the top view is just through these areas, because of the way that I want to wear it and style it, I'm just going to come and just really break into these top bits. So thank you guys for staying with us and tuning in. I know it's a uh, takes a while, there's a lot of hair here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for tuning in on a Sunday. Um, we don't know what time it is, where you are in the world, but it's evening here in London. Um, we're coming to you from the new Slade Hair Academy here in central London as well. Which we're very happy. We're very, very happy, happy to, to be here. So it's our brand new home. We've had our first class with Maria, who's come all the way from Ireland to see us as well. So we're just opening up. We've got a couple of little things left to do within the academy. So as you watch our lives, you'll see the place developing and you'll see some more things added as well. Um, James is teaching his next course here on the... 19th and 20th of sounds about I think right. so of January <laughs> and uh, there's only one space left so if you'd like to come have a class with James here in our London Academy you've got one opportunity left or uh, you're gonna have to wait I'm afraid so um, do you want to say a little bit about what the class is what yeah so so the class is all about slant so it's our first of our geometric series a geometric series is uh, fundamentally split into three areas of precision cutting one is our triangle the next is our round and the third is our square, but those essentially, if you're looking for that James, yeah, is, um, those essentially are into our three most advanced packages because of how hard they are. So you can see James has done a mixture here today. He's worked with something that's a bit of a rounded shape as well. He's worked with some triangular layering. And so what we do is we try and show you the core of how things work. And then what we do is we let you after that learn how to mix them like James is. So if you want to cut like James, you have to learn how to do those core few ones first. And then after that, you start learning the fun things like we've done today. So well, I think for this underneath, I think you'd agree that 
what we've done so far, this would be something we would call abstract. Yes. Because it's something that, you know, everything's connecting, mm -hmm. but there's, there's different shapes and different techniques within it. Now, because we've got this top area where we're using disconnection, we're moving towards something that's slightly more creative. So we're, we're getting a real nice mixture today, which is fun. Let's try and clean you up a little bit. You can see how much hair there is, can't you? <laughs> All right. You're not lacking. That's for sure. I like that. Right, so I'm going to do a really quick recap for you guys before we move on to the top, okay? So we've started on the front and the sides, okay? We've sectioned off from just behind the ear, the same on both sides. Worked horizontally, okay? Connecting, did one side, then I did the other just to get a balance, and then connected through. My first section was heavier down through my fingers but onto the skin. Each section I elevated slightly more, slightly more. So working from a line into graduation into a layer. Really getting that nice head hugging shape, flattening the head out through the parietal area. Then I worked back through, working on a diagonal, okay, connecting into the nape. Nice and tight, nice and tight into the nape. Okay, we then, if you imagine the cone was my fingers, we then worked more onto the vertical and came through that back, working again, connecting from this high point in and round. So working with graduation and layering all the way through that. And what that does is it just stops it from being too heavy in this area. I mean, if you look, this is kind of working around the head shape now, and I think that's working really nicely. If we'd have built that up too much, we might have created a little bit too much depth in the head shape and the bone structure. So, what we're going to do now is we are going to work on our little areas of disconnection. So, so, I'm just going to give it a little work on that one. Ah, right there. Thank you so much. You know, I'm going to do it. Oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing two very different things on both sides, okay? So, on this first side, One black. Yeah, right. On this first side, what I'm going to do is I want to do something again, much more head hugging, much more fitted. Okay. And on this second side, this is where I want my length to come and shoot out and have that colour looking incredible. All right. So what I'm going to do as well, I just want to say as well that this colour was done by um, a colleague of mine called Jason Gray. He's a really amazing colourist, he's got a page called Carbon Kit, go and check him out and thank you Jason for doing the colour for us. Big up to Jason, thank you so much for the colour, we really appreciate it. Guys, if you have any questions about what we're doing today or what we've done before, please just let us know, put a little comment down below and we'll be more than happy to answer. So if James does something and you don't quite understand, you can just comment, even when the video is finished and we'd love to get back to you as well. Absolutely. Right, okay, so what I'm going to do now right, is I'm going to come through. Let's have a look at where my lengths are. I'm using what I've already got, okay? And I'm going to use this back point, okay? So the, the hair that I've already cut at the back, I'm going to use that as a guide to connect in to my top. And I'm going to come across, elevating the hair up, and working a nice square cutting line. So we can see if my comb goes in, my fingers follow my comb and I work up to the knuckle. Right, and I keep that same elevation, so elevating right up. My fingers follow my comb again. Okay, now with my guideline, what I always tend to do is I'll work it in and get it nice and clean and then I'll just re-comb the whole thing out and just make sure that it's super, super perfect. Cool, so we just have a, a question from Rob and he said, can I ask what shears you're using? You can indeed, Rob. Thank you for asking, mate. Thanks for the question. Um, what these are, these are actually nicks. So they're, they're quite an old scissor actually. Uh, a good friend gave them to me a long time ago. But they're a little, uh, they're a four and a half inch scissor. Uh, really beautiful, very light, very dynamic. Um, you know, but I use, I do use different scissors. I, I work quite a lot with uh, Joelle's. I really enjoy Joelle's. I think they're a brilliant scissor. I know Michael works with Joelle's a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, but for me, it's, it's about how something feels in your hand, you know. And, 
And these, as soon as I picked them up, I just loved them. So my friend John Blesson gave them to me as a, as a nice gift. <laughs> Gifts are <laughs> always, them always great better, when we talk yeah. about scissors or shears, sorry. So guys, what I'm doing here now, right, is I'm coming through. Now the reason I've moved to the other side is first of all for you to see, but so I want to over direct all of this back. Okay, so back towards me. Wherever I stand, I'm more likely to pull the head towards me. Okay? People do it nice and straight down, it's perfect. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna over direct all this hair up to that first point. So what we were talking about earlier with over direction, now we are over directing everything to the guideline, to our first, to the area we first cut. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna flatten out this top shirt area, this top part of the head, and allow some of that length to fall over the underneath. So with that, we're gonna have a bit more to play with when we drive the hair later. Not too much later, don't worry, Safe. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Sarah says lovely technique. Thank you Thanks, very much, Sarah. Sarah. That means a lot. So this is going to be my last section through this. Working everything up. Just making sure. I always make sure I comb all the way, even if I know that there's no more hair going to come off. I always work all the way to the bottom of my section to make sure that there is nothing. Now, what that has done, and we can see, is we've flattened up again this top area, okay? We've left a little bit more length through here that we can kind of, you know, we can do a lot with. We can turn it over the fringe, we can sit it backwards. So we just have a little bit more now to play with, so we're a bit more versatile, okay? And we can see if we pull it out this way, we can see there's our disconnection through there. Just how, how would you actually choose the length in, for that piece? Did you, know, did you understand where it was going to fall and you decided? I knew I, I, knew I wanted it to fall over, I know I didn't want it to be dramatically long over that. Now what I've done is, I've actually used the hair in the back, yeah. as you can see if I pull this out here. The hair that I previously cut in underneath, I pulled up and actually used that as a guide okay. Okay, to create my first point of length through here. All right, that way again, we, we're having connection. So it's going to be disconnected, but not something super strong, because the strength, I'm leaving to this okay. over here. So, so the back is connected, the front is disconnected, you knew that you wanted it to sit a little bit longer in the front than everything else, but this side's going to be the crazy side. This side's nice. going to be much so I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Crazy is my style. <laughs> so I mean, if we see now, look how, look how strong that colour is. You know, this was all over before, okay? This covered the whole hair. Now, we're gonna have this really amazing flash of it, which I'm, I'm really excited to see when it's dry, because it's gonna be cool. So, what I'm gonna do is, not a huge amount, actually. I'm gonna come through my first section. So, this is my panel, okay? I'm gonna come through my first section and work it slightly shorter to longer, all right? But what I really wanna do is, I really wanna keep a lot of this length, especially towards the front. Now, Maria, who's on our course in London right now, watching, she won one of, the course, one of the days of the courses for free because she answered the question right, okay? And what was the question, Michael? What does short hair do to long hair? And what was the answer, Maria? Short hair pushing the It's pushing it, all right? So I want to push this length forward, all right? I want this hair to really come out at you. So what I'm going to do, the reason I'm working slightly shorter in the back to longer is because this hair is going to push that and work it round the head. So you're almost thinking to yourself, I'm going to design this to push in a certain place, to really create a shape and a movement from the lens that you're creating as well. Exactly, that's exactly it. Amazing, so it's not just about shape, it's about the movement as well, I love it. I mean, I've seen you do this a lot, James. You create some really, absolutely unbelievable haircuts where the movement just changes within the haircut, and you you really design it as you're going through, which is a huge thing. Thank you, Michael. I like it. So now I'm learning all your secrets. Thank you. <laughs> Keep them coming. So, guys, if you have any questions for James, you know you should really ask him. He really is an unbelievable cutter. Obviously. Um, 
you can ask us at any time, any point you like as well. Please like and share this, we really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we certainly is, do, really we certainly coming, do. Coming along We're nice. really close to getting there now, guys. Just got this last section after this one to do, and then let's see how we're looking. Amazing, and guys, just let us know where you're tuning in from. We want to see how many countries we've got tuning in always, so just give us a little comment, let us know where you're tuning in from. We'd love to hear We'd it really as well. really appreciate it. Cool. So this is the big disconnection side. So, so is it still connected in the back then? No. No, okay. okay. It's completely, completely disconnected, disconnected to everything else. Wow. So what we're going to have is, is, the reason why I didn't connect it in the back is we're going to lose the length, the, the colour. Because, see, the colour is only on the mid-length to end. So as soon as I start cutting this down, we're going to get this. So what I wanted is this to really contrast the rest of it. So let's have a look. So we can really have some fun with this now. I'm going to dry it now, and then I'm going to decide if I want to take some more of this length or way out, but I want it to all be visual from now on. Okay, guys, please let us know what you think of everything so far. I'm just going to do a quick blow dry on this little area for you. So we have Bonnie watching from South Texas. Thank you so much for tuning in, Bonnie. We really yes, appreciate it. Texas. I don't know what time it is in Texas, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet you it's probably early. Thanks so much, Bonnie, for tuning in. Amazing. So if you have any questions about what we're using, um, you know, James explained what shears he was using as well. So we really appreciate that, guys. We've had some great questions tonight as well. Bonnie said uh, that you should come to Cyprus, James, and I should bring you with. So I like that. There you go. There go. James has actually been to Cyprus before. You did a show. Uh, didn't uh, you? Yeah, when was it? it? Was it about a year ago? It was about a year ago, I think. Was it? Yeah, we did. Um, we did a really cool show actually, in the and it was in a place called Pavilion, indeed. So it was a really cool. It was for the hair and beauty uh, exhibition in Cyprus. So for the local thing, we have a good morning from Australia. I like that. Hello, very much from Australia. What, what time is it in Australia? Please let us know. We'll be curious. And where in Australia? Because. Uh, James, I think, has a, has a strong connection to Australia, don't you? Well, not as strong as you. You were born there. But, well, I was born there. <laughs> but yeah, I lived there for a little while. Yeah, it's, it's such a beautiful country. I really yeah, love for, it. For a moment, I forgot I was born there. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get to stay that long afterwards, but, uh, but I was definitely born there. So when you're, when you're confused about Michael's different accent, then that's, yeah. that's why. <laughs> Basically, I'm confused myself. <laughs> cool. So it's uh, two forty-three p.m. in a warm afternoon. Oh, thanks for uh, thanks for telling us. Thanks for rubbing it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a freezing night here in London. So we're we're, we're coming to you from the Slate Hair Academy here in London. So it's our new academy based in central London. We look forward to seeing you here. We're doing one course a month here for the rest of the year. And in the meantime, after that, we're going to be traveling. We're releasing where we're going to be going to this year later on. So from January, we're going to be announcing all the countries we're going to be going to and a couple of the upcoming dates. So we release the next three months of courses for you in January. So the January class, we have one left. February class, we have four places left. And then we're just going to be releasing the dates as we go on throughout the year. So if you keep tuning in on our social media, you'll be able to see. But so this is looking amazing, James. Thank you so much. Well, guys, as well, if, you're, if you know any hairdressers out there that you, you, know, you think that might be interested and want to see this, please just tag their name in this video. It would be really great and we could reach you know, as many people as we can. So uh, it's, uh, it's 6.30 a.m. in Brisbane. And it's 30 degrees. Oh, oh no. Listen, <laughs> should we just should we leave? <laughs> Alright. Trudy, we're on our way. <laughs> Save us a place on the beach. Come on, man. We'll do the Chris Yell says hi. Hello Chris. Thank you for tuning in as well. We really appreciate it. It's 3 uh, 45 pm in Philadelphia and very cold. I like that oh, very better, well. Much better. We're coming together now, we're coming together. We feel your pain. We feel your pain. I love that. I love that. Cool, yeah. So what we will be doing is we're doing the next Hairbrain Live. We do one every month. We'll be coming up to two years of Hairbrain Lives every monthly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be giving a free giveaway on our next one as well for one of our courses at our new Slate Academy here in central London. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned. And uh, we have uh, Sierra who says, 
Wow, I love the fringe. Oh, thank you, Sarah. I'm just going to come through now with a bit more of a tension. Right, and just to really smooth out the ends through this. So what, what brush is that, James? What would you call that brush? I would call this a half brush. <laughs> I like it. You couldn't afford the other half brush. <laughs> This one, because of the bristle on it, you can just get a little bit more tension when drying. So I find it really good for coming in and smoothing out my lens. Amazing. You know, we wanted to. You know, we could start if we wanted to. We could really start to put a bit more of a bevel in this if we wanted to kind of, you know, create that more quiffy feel for the front. I just want it to be a little bit more, more neutral so we can play with it. Ooh. Loving it. Uh, Trudy says, love the colour, looks fab. Who did the colour again? Jason Gray. Thank you. Gray like it's in the colour grey? Yeah. Yeah, so Jason Gray, I love it. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Gray. The Carbon Kid is his name. Carbon Kid. He's not, social media. He's not 50 shades. <laughs> So this is this just adds a whole new level of versatility, I think, you know, having these this this length through here, we can really dial it up or dial it down as much as much as we want. What I am gonna do is through my shorter side, I'm just gonna come in and break into it so it blends. And what I'm gonna do is so that, so the sides blend together a little bit, I'm gonna come and point through both. Now I'm not I don't wanna be removing all of this length, but what I do wanna do is just have a little bit more blend through there. So what you're doing is you're doing a visual blend as opposed to a technical blend. You're making Correct. it visually look by, by removing a bit of the weight, it's just gonna help it sit a little bit more visually blended and not so weight line. Exactly, exactly, okay, exactly. Cool. Cool, because I, I obviously I, I do that as well. You know, when you have this connection, it's hard to make everything look like it blends. Like it all sits together, yeah, exactly. So you kind of can have that problem of everything looking a bit weight liney. So that's a good tip for everyone to just point into it, just so it blends better. Nice. Yeah, I think it's I think it will work, it will it will work quite nicely because you know what you do really is by pointing into something, you don't remove weight. What you're doing is, is you're breaking up weight. You're not actually, you know, if I come and cut that off, then I'm removing weight. But by pointing into it, what I'm doing is I'm breaking up the weight. So dispersing it. So as it sits, we're going to have these shorter areas and longer areas kind of all flowing together. I like that. that. I've, I've, no, I've, uh, I haven't heard that one before, but I'm going to start using it. Thanks, James. <laughs> That's a great way. So you kind of, you're not removing the weight, you're just diffusing it. Exactly. Kind of amazing. Very nice. Cool. So any tips for people about pointing in, you know, vertically, diagonally? So I guess, yeah, there's those, there's those two differences, really. I mean, the, on the, what I'm doing is, is when I'm coming through and I'm working in the vertical, so my blade is parallel to the hair that I'm pointing into, what I'm doing is I'm removing more of the edge, softening the edge, so I'm not taking a lot out. The more I move onto the horizontal, the more I'm going to cut... Well, into the hair basically the more I'm going to disperse the weight so I'm going to break it up more and give it more of a, a real broken finish so I'm coming in at a very slight diagonal because I don't want to break it up but I'm not taking too much out because I don't want to change it too much I'm liking what's going on amazing so more vertical in you're not changing it so much the more diagonal you go the more you're going to really break up that line and change what you've created and then you know you can really just come through now with a bit of something a bit more visual Something a bit more slicey. Now again, by doing that, what I've done is I've encouraged this hair to kind of come around the head. So it's kind of working a bit like with, with you know, almost like physics, isn't it really? What you're taking out and what you're working with. Go on, I'm just gonna quickly spin into the mirror so I can have a little look at what's going on. <laughs> I think we're really close. Yeah, it's looking Let us know what you think, guys. 
Yeah, please guys, let us know what you think. We'd love to hear what you think. Um, let us know if you like it. If you have any questions about what James has done or you want to know anything more about what he was thinking while he was doing it or the way he created it, just ask us. We'd be more than happy to say. But let us know what you think. Thanks so much for tuning in. Sarah says so much depth. Very beautiful. Thank you so much, guys. I really hope that, you know, I feel like when, you, when you're learning and when you're watching things, it's really important to focus on taking just two or three things from something. If you try and remember everything, you're never going to... You're never going to remember everything, you know. So try and focus on two or three things that you really want to take from this. So what would be the two, three key points of this haircut then for people to take home with since you said that, James? Well, for me, I think because of my, the way that my elevation changed my technique so much, by working horizontally through that front, I've managed to go, well, in a small space, I've managed to go from a line into a layer for it to be to, to all blend and be seamless so i think that's a really important one so, so i missed that sorry i said say that again sorry. so my elevation yeah. uh, in my technique so how my elevation creates technique and, and creates weight or removes weight so i think it's really interesting how from today working horizontally in this front we've worked in from a line okay. in a small space we've gone yeah, from a line yeah, no, no, all no. the way into a layer to really reduce the weight on the head. So you've so you've gone from a line where you've seen your outline length, you've gone straight away up into your layering as well. So you are working in through place. that into a graduation, all the way into a layer. So working through our three techniques. So using elevation can be a really handy tool to either build weight or flatten weight out. Amazing. Oscar says beautiful. Thanks so much, Oscar, for tuning in. Thank you, Oscar. That's amazing. So that was number one, I guess. Uh, yeah, that so was, that number, was number, number one. one. So number one was your elevation that created your three techniques straight away off the bat in that small area. Number two would be number two, a big one for this, and I think with this haircut was a was a really vital factor. Is, is look at your silhouette. Yeah. Look at your silhouette and, and be patient with it. You know, really start to you know build something when you see something, rather than you know just cutting off the hairline. Maybe spend that little bit of extra time to have something a little bit softer, something that's going to work a little bit better for your client because you spend that little bit of extra time might be the difference of them all going back to someone else. And you know, that's our business, so I think that's a really important awesome. thing. So taking that little bit more time to look at the silhouette and the way it looks, I mean, from where I'm standing, the silhouette is phenomenal. It looks Thank absolutely so amazing. Thank you so much. Beautiful. So guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit of a bit of product in there, I think. Amazing. I think we'll be, we'll be rocking and rolling. A little bit of the dust, lovely, lovely. Amazing. So just using uh, this really beautiful hairspray by Milkshake, the light style medium hold spray. I find it's really beautiful still when you've used it. It's a really gorgeous product. So again, those of you that have seen any of my live videos before, you know that even though we do work with some strong disconnection and some strong shapes, I always do feel like beauty is, uh, is the most important. So that's why when I work with disconnection, although this is quite strong, this disconnection through here, it doesn't look overly disconnected, you know, we have something where it, it still kind of has a feel of blend. And it's amazing how from that underneath now, what we've created is that real depth in the colour in the underneath and this this popping out through the front, I really, I think it's cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I always love your work because it feels like it's soft and strong at the same time. And I think that's something that's really, really hard in this industry to, to find the balance between a strong silhouette haircut, something that looks really intentional and it's done on purpose, but something that has character and softness. So finding that balance between strong and soft is really what I think James' work's all about. And I love so it so much. much. Brilliant. I'll move this around a bit until I'm happy. Until it's happy. Well, if you want to see any more of James's haircuts, you can go on our Facebook page, Slate Hair Education, and you can see all of his other live haircuts that he's done. Amazing tutorials to watch from as well. This is your seventh live Slate video, so there's another six to go for you to watch straight after this. I recommend binge watching them. <laughs> that, that is definitely the best. It's looking cool, man. Cool. All right, I'm going to stand up for me. What we're going to do is we're going to get some pictures as well, which we'll be posting in the live feed. 
So check, keep an eye on that and keep an eye on our social media as well. Yeah, there we go. Cool. So we will be going live again on the 18th of December for Hairbrain Live. So please check out our social media. Stay tuned to Hairbrain and you can see our next video as well. We've come to you live today from the Slate Hair Educations Academy. So we really hope to see you guys here at our new academy space soon. Right. Beautiful. I'm just going to do a quick recap for you now, guys. Thank you so much again for tuning in and staying with us. So, it's gorgeous Sophie, very tall, gorgeous Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not really this short, she's just very tall. Okay. Um, what we started off with doing is we separated the same on both sides, the front from the back, okay? We had two sections through the top, which were slightly different for different reasons. Um, one, because I wanted to work slightly higher, and one because I wanted to leave more length towards the front on the left, so it curved round slightly towards the front. So I started off in this front area, working into my fingers into a line, okay? I did exactly the same on both sides to create my balance, to make sure I was balanced for, for the rest of the haircut. And from there, what we did is we worked subsequent questions, questions, subsequent sections, sorry, from the front to the back. So I worked from here down, and then into the back, down into the nape. Then I started to elevate each section. So what you find is, is what we did is we went from here, and then out, 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 out working into a layer then to flatten out the head shape through there. And from here we then come through and we connected more towards the vertical to flatten this shape out. So we've got this kind of like heavy build, not heavy, but flatter build up of, of graduation and then rather than keep building that, we've come round rounded that through and flattened it up. And that's what gives it that nice head hugging shape. So if you can see, we've got that really beautiful silhouette through there, just filling out the head but flattening out the wider points. So we did this on both sides. Then with my disconnection, sorry, with the fringe, sorry, sorry, let's step it back. <laughs> with the fringe, I then came through and worked again into a little layer vertically, followed the head shape, okay? And then that left that little bit of difference in length where I could come through and chisel out what I wanted to at the end. So on our two sections through the top, on the first side, our shorter side, what we did is we elevated everything right up and connected, oh, it's been around here, darling. from this hair that we've cut in the back, lifted that up and connected in through to the front, okay? Then we lifted everything up to that point, which allows this hair to kind of sit over that underneath, very slightly, but it just gives it that little finish. Now, through the other side, what we did, we worked slightly shorter into the length in the front. What that's gonna do is push the hair forwards, and as you can see, it pushes it round. So I then just broke everything up with a point cutting technique for the top, and this is it, so I really hope you like it guys. Again, thank you so much. Thank you Maria for being Maria, here. Come, thank you come Sophie. Sure. <laughs> thank you Thanks Michael, so thank you Francesco so yeah. much from the camera. Cheers guys, we'll see you on the 18th. 18th of December for our next Hairbrain Live. Lots of love from London and from the Slate Hair Education's new academy here. Good night guys, see you soon.